It's not the Hindenburg, but this is the next legendary cruiser that most of us were most excited for. And after this first game, <laughs> yes, you should be excited for this one. This thing is a beast. And in the match back here on Trap, we will creep up past 200k, so be sure to stick around to see how this one wraps up. And I just realized the last video I posted in Alabama, we spawned same map, same location, so that's pretty fun. IJN Cruisers, they're known for a couple things. One, being stealthy and having this crazy powerful HE. It sets lots of fires, and Zhao feels like a great step above Ibuki here at tier 8. After so many tiers of the same style gun layout since tier 5, right? We finally get upgraded guns for these IJ and Heavy Cruisers. They are in a 3x4 configuration, which is a lot friendlier to players, I would say. The gun angles though, you can kind of see here, they can be dangerous to get all of your guns on target. It's risky, you could absolutely get dev struck. There are other good things about the guns though. The shell velocity. 920 meters per second on PC, making it faster than a Buki as far as I can tell. So it's easier to aim. You're going to do pretty good hitting moving targets like the Shimikaze here. The shells are going to get there pretty fast. They're not that floaty, so you'll be able to deal damage on fast moving targets. And the best thing of all about these guns, extremely, extremely accurate. The Sigma 2.05, which is a little bit above cruisers, and it has destroyer dispersion, so extremely accurate. Is it the most accurate of all cruisers in the game now? I would have to look. Stalingrad has a really high Sigma, of course, but, you know, it has worse dispersion. And then the Gorizia, I think, used to be the second most accurate ship in the game. Again, high Sigma, but they don't have destroyer dispersion ellipses, which is pretty great. So this ship is absolutely made of explodium right there. That shot from the Yamato, we made a little bit of a mistake and it could have cost us a lot more than it did. So you're going to have to be very, very careful in this ship. But watching the shells flying towards the enemy battleships, you can see the accuracy. We're getting a ton of shell hits on targets and you're going to rack up damage numbers pretty easily if you can stay alive. When you get your Zhao after researching her in the bureau, you're going to have some options on how you want to set her up, agile or damage output. Now here's how I set mine up. Turret module in slot one. Again, this thing is so accurate, you don't need aiming systems. Prop, rudder, and reload. I used a Togo with all DPM skills. Of course, Macau would be a solid choice if you're a free to play player. And inspirations, oh, probably gun reload and stealth personally. If the range isn't good enough for you to play at Legendary Tier and stay alive, you could throw Kuznetsov on there as we watch our one destroyer <laughs> just get blasted into oblivion. So a little PSA, and it usually when in ship reviews I just talk about the ships because that's what a ship review should be, but PSA, if you're a destroyer player and you sail into the cap and you lay down smoke and then you stay in your smoke, you have just blinded your entire team on your flank. So the Yamato and myself over here, nothing. We can't see anything, we have no targets to shoot. So that's kind of why I'm moving on to greener pastures and because the Prince Ruprecht is in a very dangerous position and I want to start pummeling him so that he doesn't get the best of our team over on A. So yeah, just a little PSA. If you're a DD player, don't do that. Don't smoke and sit in your smoke in a cat. Plus, you're probably going to get torped anyways. Kind of like that guy. The longer I play cruisers though, I tend to do DPM builds more than agile builds, and here's why. It's a lot easier to rack up big damage numbers when you're not doing an agile build, and I just I feel like agile builds are really only great on brawling cruisers where you're going to be up close and personal, and that is not what Zhao is. It is no brawler. If you want to live, you're going to have to stay a little farther back away from the action. Use your stealth, use your range, and... Uh, try to stay alive. You don't really have a great HP pool, and the ship is really made of explodium. The armor is an upgrade over a buki, I will say that. 30 millimeters of plating on the deck and the midsection of the ship, so you can angle and bully 16 inch battleships, which there are a lot of up here. However, all the Yamatos and the Musashis up here, which is the most played battleships up here, it feels like. I'm sure Yamato is the most played legendary tier battleship. 
They can absolutely overmatch you everywhere and you can get yeeted, so be very, very careful and keep your head on a swivel. The Citadel is above the waterline and very vulnerable. I would say Zhao is a great ambush cruiser, as long as you're the one doing the ambushing. With the slow traverse speed of the guns, you don't want to get caught with your pants down because likely you'll not be able to react in time. It's a terrible, terrible brawler, and I'd recommend staying pretty far back so you have time to react to battleship salvo. So in this game, you can see we're kind of, well, we got spotted in this turn here, which is scary. There's still a Shimakaze over here. But um, yes, you kind of want to stay in a position where you're just focused on letting one ship focus on you at a time or one battleship shoot you at a time so that you can just dodge. The longer you stay alive in this ship and all cruisers for that instance, the more influential you can become later on in the match. Speaking of dealing damage, Zhao has a 19% stock fire chance, 2% more than Abuki, and with the improved accuracy, you're going to be burning down battleships pretty effectively. And hold on, battleship players, I have something for you a little later on, maybe some tips to help you, because I, I feel like people are just going to be screaming about HE spam and blah blah blah. So in the match right now, our side, it's, it's pretty scary looking. These IJN cruisers are hard to play when you don't have anyone spotting for you and you don't have anyone tanking for you. You have to be really careful, so we're bobbing and weaving over here, trying not to get yeeted. So we're going to kind of sail a little bit away, and the good thing about the stealth of this ship is usually you can go unspotted, just stop shooting your guns. Now, unfortunately, there is that Shima here, and he's going to keep us lit the whole time. So let's just keep sailing away and try not to get taken out of the match. The gun DPM, it's pretty decent, although on this chart it doesn't look as good as it feels because things like Wusta and Colbert, they have these insanely fast firing guns. Two reasons this chart is kind of misleading. Those small caliber guns are going to shatter a lot more than these big IJN 203s and that kind of balances it out. And of course the big fire chance on Zhao. With the Togo, it goes up to 27% and that is very, very spicy. Yes, I know Smolensk is on that chart. I added it years ago when I was predicting what legendary tier ships would be coming to the game. And slowly they've all been added except Smolensk. So yes, <laughs> I know it's on the chart. Thank you. Now the AP, we didn't really get to test it out much. I'm going to see if we can use it on the Napoli here, even though that's not a, a great cruiser to shoot at because it's armored like an anvil. But I would say most people underestimate AP on IJN cruisers. If you catch somebody broadside, absolutely let it fly, especially if you're using punch through. That is such a strong skill for cruiser commanders and broadside cruisers. You can absolutely yeet them. The torpedoes, yes, you have them. You have an option to upgrade them to the F3 variant as well, which I am running in this game. It gives them an 11 kilometer range. They hit like an absolute truck, but they reload very slowly. And they have tra tragic firing angles, really tragic. You're gonna have a hard time getting them off unless you're just unspotted or you pre-fire them in a location. Uh, you have to show a lot of broadside. And like Mogami and Ibuki, if you're ever rushing an enemy, you're basically going to have to sail past them to fire these bad boys. They're really for kiting. AA DPS is not that great, 327, but what this ship does have going for her is great maneuverability. Top speed's decent, 34.5, but the rudder shift is awesome, 7.7 seconds stock. That's nuts for these massive LT cruisers, and I'll be curious what you can get it down to with double rudder. Probably around two seconds, so if you're into the agile thing, you can have some serious fun with her. Personally, I just use prop juking, and it seems to work better for me, like in this match. Island cover's also great whenever it's available, but, you know, you don't always have that option. Usually try to set up where your broadside isn't facing anyone and just start whittling someone down, like Mr. He's in here. Now, I know Battleship players, this is very frustrating. <laughs> so let me explain a couple things. Number one, even if a Battleship player gets a well-placed salvo, it's dead. Just like that, game over. That's the trade-off for playing cruisers like this. It's high risk, high reward. If you dodge all the mean Battleship players, then yes, you can put up big damage numbers. But one mistake in a ship like this, literally one mistake in your game is over. That's how it balances out. Also, Battleship mains, if you're still watching and you haven't uh, turned off this video in disgust, a little tip. A lot of cruiser players get in the habit of doing the same thing, so watch them. 
usually if you shoot at them they will make the same move you know they'll break and turn out so if you can kind of predict what they're going to do by what they've done in the past maybe that next salvo you could just end their whole career so to finish up i think zhao is a glass cannon she pumps out the damage but she is a lot of fun Definitely play your way up through Miyoko, Megami, and Ibuki so you know what you're doing when you get her, and that's all I have to say about that. If you enjoyed, let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear from you. Be sure to like the video, and don't forget to sub so you don't miss any future videos. This is Durka signing off. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.